Hi, I'm Paul Brody. We're in the shop here. Not a bad day. It did snow last night. Mitch behind the cameras. For years, I used these rags, and I don't have a bag, so I don't know the brand name or whatever, but it's a painter's towel. They're sold at, they were sold at Home Depot, and they've got a hemmed edge, and they work really well in the shop. I used them for years. Home Depot apparently doesn't sell these anymore. Now they sell these. And this is a, a microfiber towel. They had a sale. This, this whole bag was like 11 bucks or something. And I thought, great, I found something else. But it doesn't work because here's a rag. And this is a perfect example of how it holds the chips. And if you want to wipe your hands and the rag is holding a chip, that's a good way to get a cut. So you got to be really careful with rags and I wish I knew where these came from. Anyway, that's my, my story on rags for, for today. All right, we've got a, a chain ring here. Yesterday I was outside, it was not super warm and I took a grinder, well, actually a belt sander and a, a spiral roll on a on a quarter inch grinder and I, I took off the chrome because we need to do some work here. We have to put in a bushing here, I'll call it a bushing. And that's what goes on to the shaft, a three quarter inch shaft made out of, out of, out of stainless steel. So this is gonna be silver soldered on and there also has to be something going here because that has to locate onto the onto the crank arm. I don't have the taps yet. That's why we haven't finished off this, but this is going to be a day's work here. So I did some grinding on the inside because that was kind of rough. Mitch is going to show you a photograph of that. And this is all smoothed out now. It's going to get nickel plated. And I'll do some I'll do some hand sanding to smooth this a little bit more. It's kind of hard using the belt sander, so, uh, a three quarter inch belt sander. That's what I use to take off the chrome. So first thing we're going to do is is to go to the lathe. We can hold this in the in the three jaw chuck, and we're going to bore out the middle. This is all it's not round, and it's too big. We're going to make a bushing. And that's going to get silver soldered in. And then we also have to make something that goes into here. And that's going to, that goes like that. So somewhere right around here, there's going to be a hole. And what I want to do is I want to make a six millimeter thread. And inside this little bushing, I'll call that a bushing as well, there's going to be an Allen screw, which is basically hidden because it's going to be inside. That's what we're doing today. And I also have to put flats on here so that the cotter pin, there's a cotter pin, there's the one, that's the one with the flat. So the cotter pin can rest on the flat. So that's going to happen in the mill. Let's go to the lathe. Thanks for tuning in. So it's held on, on that tooth and that tooth and also that tooth there. So can you see how they're all, all different positions? It's a 26 tooth sprocket. So when you divide by three, you get a fractions. This is a Schwinn ring, a chain ring, probably from the forties or the fifties, I think, I'm not sure. I'm guessing. So we're gonna we're gonna bore out that nice and easy. So what we have here is an interrupted cut and can you see where it's shiny and where it's rusty? It's definitely, that hole is not in the middle. I don't know, I don't know what happened to that hole, but so it is taking off metal. I can tell that it's hard. It's not, it's not soft.
I'm going to change the chuck around. I'll change the jaws. I'll flip them around. Then we can hold this guy. And this is going to make a little bushing that goes in there. It's going to be not very thick. Something, something like that. About half of this. <laughs> There we go. A little bit of play, just a little. We're going to bore a hole and then we'll add a, a little a little step down because it because the bearing goes up against this in the bottom bracket and we can't have the outer flange also contacting. We just want the inner flange contacting. This is the axle, it goes in there, it's a little bit of play, but it's going to get nickel plated, it's going to get silver soldered, that might shrink it down a little bit, and then it's going to get nickel plated, half a thou aside, so I think it'll be fine. Okay, so the crank goes like that. And I just want to see how much larger that is than this. So we'll see if it looks looks okay. So it's just a little bit bigger. I think that's gonna look okay. So there's the axle. And it looks like that. The sprocket goes on there. Oh, the, so the chain. Oh, so I'm going to make it on a on a on a, a taper here, and that's going to allow for for the space for the chain. So I have to keep that in mind. So I think that's going to be okay. So that's how that goes, like that. And then I got a little bit of space in between here. Well, we can also look on the on the bike. Let's let's go do that. Just see how it's going. Okay, this is how it all fits together. We got a uh, a ball bearing there, a bearing race, and this slides over, and this butts up against the inner, and it's relieved here so it doesn't hit the outer, and it spaces it out somewhat. So when it goes on, I got a good chain line. And this is the crank arm. It's gonna fit on there like that. That gets flush like that. And then you can see how, 
yeah, there's not a whole lot of space in between here. So this has to be relieved because the chain has to go on there. I could have, I could have left the shoulder a little bit larger or I guess I could put a spacer in there. But anyway, we're going to figure that out. That's okay like that. It could have a spacer in there. And then we have to anchor. Come on. I have to drill a hole here because it, it's got to locate with that because otherwise this is just going to spin. There has to be some sort of a mechanism that holds this into there. So let's go. Well, what is the next thing to do? I guess the next thing to do is to drill that out and see what size we get that to. And also look at our, an Allen screw. See what size I'm going to use. I'm thinking a six millimeter would go in there. And it would go in, in from the back and get hidden. You wouldn't really see that much at all. So that's what we're going to do. I think I need to make a little drawing of this so that I know what I'm doing. So maybe we'll go back to the bench. I'll find some cardboard and a pen. CR is, is short for a chain ring. This is a chain ring. And then it comes out and it's 80. Well, I should see if I can face it, but then it's getting even smaller. So I think I'm going to have to put a shim in there. I'd say that is 80 thou. We have a half inch hole here. Something like, like right about there. Oh, right there. There's our half inch hole. It'll be, it'll be thicker than that because I'll make a shim to go in there. Because with all the silver soldering, things could move around as well. If this is also a half inch, like that, that's where this goes, like that. Right there, I can draw that in. So that's the chain ring. This is the crank arm. So it's gonna, then it's gonna have a thread there. No, this has to go in farther. There has to be a, let's get an Allen screw and see what happens. This is gonna be, if we put a half inch hole in there and the hole goes in a little bit more showing you how my brain works here. So that hole goes in a little bit more and then the Allen screw is like that. And it can go in a little bit more. So we've got a shoulder from here to here or here to here. We can make that a little deeper. And then there's the thread. So what this does it holds the it holds the sprocket or the chain ring onto the crank arm and because this part goes down inside of the crank arm there's going to be it's going to be a half inch hole here that feeds down into the hole and then it can't move because all the thread is doing all the allen screw is doing is just holding this all in that's what it does so we have to build this piece here We'll, we'll get a piece of, I don't know, seven eighths, three quarters, something like that, and and we'll we'll just machine it. Let's go do that.
we're going to go to the hacksaw now and we're going to cut this off, flip it back in the, in the three jaw chuck and work on the other end. It's getting close. That should be half inch now. A little bit under, okay. Can you see it flowing? Flowing quite nicely. There we go. That was good. A nice little fillet there. Can you see how that one's still hot? That one hasn't solidified yet. This one has, this is solid, it's solidified. So I have to let that cool. It looks like it bulged up in the middle. I'm heating the middle. It's gotta go somewhere. It can't force all the outside up. So it looks like it bulged up. So I might have to make it straight after it's on the shaft. I'll put it in the lathe. I'll take a, a crescent wrench and hold it here and just give it a little, little movement. Make sure it runs true. Those are all the little details. So we'll let that cool down now. Okay, I did silver soldering. That worked out fine. I bebossed it and then I was noticing that I used to have a flat chain ring. Look at that. All the heat in there, it had to go somewhere. So it bulged up, which is, is, is good in a way but this here, this piece here has to fit into the chain ring and it's definitely at an angle. Can you see how that's definitely at an angle going up? Well, that definitely did something. Let's put it on the back here. Not bad, it's come up a little bit. It's very close. Can you see there's a little bit of a gap right in the middle? So it could, it could take a little bit more, more pressing. All new to me. I would say we, we're pretty good. That's pretty flat. And this is going to be, that's going to be okay. All right, we're going to go to the mill now. We're going to hold the, hold the crank arm and we can use this to center. And then we will drill a hole and we'll take a half inch end mill because that has to go down. Let's go do that. What I'm going to do here I'm going to use the digital readout and I'm going to find the center line 
of the crank arm, and then I put this on, and I'm on the center line, I just have to dial up whatever I have there so that it fits into that hole. And then I can go ahead and work on the actual crank arm, because once that's done, we can see how it fits on the bike and put the chain on. That'll be a first. Touches, that's my Y. And that's my Y, 1.894. Half of Y, nine, four, seven. Perfect. I've got a half inch rod here and it's, it's tapered. It's got a taper on it and that's gonna fit right into there and that's gonna let me know when I'm um, in the right position because I know I'm in the center. I've already dialed up with the with the digital readout. So this is my second way of getting this exactly in line. So can you see how that works? So I pull it back. There we go. It goes down in. So that's basically, that's the zero right there. That's, that's where I wanna, want it to be. So we're gonna lock the table. That's my zero for X, the X axis. Cause I've already got the Y. So we're locking that in. See that, that's right in the middle cause it's, it's held on the taper. I've got it zeroed. So I can pull this back, take this out, and then make my hole. Here we go. It's cutting a, a counter bore, and we're going down to 190 depth. And that is it, 190. This is the big test to see if it fits. Okay, so. Oh, it fits. Look at that. Woohoo! So that's what's supposed to happen now. So now we can put this onto the bike. I know the axle isn't finished, but it fits. Look at that. There we go. It fits. It's a fitting end to this video. We're going to see how this all works. It's a mock up, right? A mock-up assembly. I've done lots of those in the past where you're working on something and you put it together again just to see how it fits. Then you take it all apart again and then you, you see what happens. So this is how this goes. Like that. Then this guy. So this, this goes into there. like that. Okay, that goes like that. And you see there's a space right there in between the crank arm and the chain ring. I have to make a space to go in there. So that's gonna happen. 
And this is the moment to see what happens here. I might have to move the axle a little bit, I don't know. No, I don't, I don't have to move the axle. It's at the very end of the slot. You can always file it just a touch. There we go, look at that. Okay, so that's the first time this has ever been all together like that and there's a little bit of play there, not bad. You always need a little bit. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed all the machining and silver soldering and straightening. Didn't expect to do that. Mitch and I like coffees. If you buy us coffees, much appreciated. Helps the channel to flow along. Please subscribe, like, please tell your friends. See you next week.